Silvanus. Abba Silvanus and his disciple Zacharias went to a certain monastery one day. They were given something to eat a little before taking the road, and when they got outside, his disciple found some water beside the path and wanted to drink. The old man said to him, Zacharias, it is a fast today. The latter said to him, But father, have we not eaten? The old man said to him, What we have eaten came through charity, but, my child, let us keep our own fast. As Abba Silvanus was sitting with the brethren one day, he was wrapped in ecstasy and fell with his face to the ground. After a long time he got up and wept. The brethren besought him, saying, What is it, father? But he remained silent and wept. When they insisted on his speaking, he said, I was taken up to see the judgment, and I saw there many of our sort coming to punishment, and many seculars going into the kingdom. The old man was full of compunction and never wanted to leave his cell. If he was obliged to go out, he hid his face in his cowl, saying, Why should I seek to see this earthly light, which is of no use? Another time his disciple Zacharias entered and found him in ecstasy with his hands stretched towards heaven. Closing the door, he went away. Coming at the sixth and ninth hours, he found him in the same state. At the tenth hour he knocked, entered, and found him at peace, and said to him, What has happened today, father? The latter replied, I was ill today, my child. But the disciple seized his feet and said to him, I will not let you go until you have told me what you have seen. The old man said, I was taken up to heaven, and I saw the glory of God, and I stayed there till now, and now I have been sent away. One day, while Abba Silvanus was living on the mountain of Sinai, his disciple Zacharias went away on an errand and said to the old man, Open the well and water the garden. The old man went out with his face hidden in his cowl, looking down at his feet. Now at that moment, a brother came along, and seeing him from a distance, he observed what he was doing. So he went up to him and said, Tell me, Abba, why were you hiding your face in your cowl while you watered the garden? The old man said to him, So that my eyes should not see the trees, my son, in case my attention should be distracted by them. A brother went to see Abba Silvanus on the mountain of Sinai. When he saw the brothers working hard, he said to the old man, Do not labor for the food which perishes. Mary has chosen the good portion. The old man said to his disciple, Zacharias, give the brother a book and put him in a cell without anything else. So when the ninth hour came, the visitor watched the door, expecting someone would be sent to call him to the meal. When no one called him, he got up, went to find the old man, and said to him, Have the brothers not eaten today? The old man replied that they had. Then he said, Why did you not call me? The old man said to him, Because you are a spiritual man, and do not need that kind of food. We, being carnal, want to eat, and that is why we work. But you have chosen the good portion, and read the whole day long, and you do not want to eat carnal food. When he heard these words, the brother made a prostration, saying, Forgive me, Abba. The old man said to him, Mary needs Martha. It is really thanks to Martha that Mary is praised. One day someone asked Abba Silvanus, how have you lived, Father, in order to become so wise? He replied, I have never let a thought that would bring the anger of God upon me enter my heart. It was said of Abba Silvanus that he stayed in his cell in secret. He had some small dried peas with which he had made a hundred necklaces to earn his food. Someone came from Egypt with an ass laden with loaves. 
he knocked and put them down in his cell. Then the old man, taking the necklaces, loaded them on the ass and sent him away. They said of Abba Silvanos that his disciple Zacharias went out without him and, taking some brothers with him, moved the garden fence back to make it larger. When he knew this, the old man took his sheepskin, went out and said to the brothers, Pray for me. When they saw what he was doing, they threw themselves at his feet, saying, Tell us, what is the matter, Father? He said to them, I shall not go back inside, nor take off my sheepskin till you have put the fence back where it was at first. So they moved the fence once again and put it back as it was. So the old man returned to his cell. Abba Silvano said, I am a slave, and my master says to me, Do your work, and I will feed you. But do not try to find out whence I shall feed you. Do not try to find out whether I have it, or whether I steal it, or whether I borrow it. Simply work, and I will feed you. Therefore, when I work, I eat the fruit of my wages, but if I do not work, I eat charity. He also said, Unhappy is the man whose reputation is greater than his work. Abba Moses asked Abba Silvanos, Can a man lay a new foundation every day? The old man said, If he works hard, he can lay a new foundation at every moment. The fathers used to say that someone met Abba Silvanos one day and saw his face and body shining like an angel, and he fell with his face to the ground. He said that others also had obtained this grace. Simon A magistrate came to see Abba Simon one day. When he heard of it, he put on his apron and went out to attend to a palm tree. When the visitors arrived, they called him out. Old man, where is the anchorite? He replied, There is no anchorite here. Hearing these words, they went away again. Another time, another magistrate came to visit him. The clergy went on ahead and said to the old man, Abba, get ready, for this magistrate has heard of you and is coming for your blessing. So he said, Yes, I will prepare myself. Then he put on a rough habit, and taking some bread and cheese in his hands, he went and sat in the doorway to eat it. When the magistrate arrived with his suite and saw him, he despised him and said, Is this the anchorite of whom we have heard so much? And they went away at once. Sopatros Someone asked Abba Sopatros, Give me a commandment, Abba, and I will keep it. He said to him, Do not allow a woman to come into your cell, and do not read apocryphal literature. Do not get involved in discussions about the image. Although this is not heresy, there is too much ignorance and liking for dispute between the two parties in this matter. It is impossible for a creature to understand the truth of it. Sarmatas Abba Sarmatas said, I prefer a sinful man who knows he has sinned and repents to a man who has not sinned and considers himself to be righteous. They said of Abba Sarmatas that on Abba Pimin's advice, he was often alone for forty days. He completed this time as though he had done nothing special. Abba Pimin went to see him and said to him, Tell me what you have seen by giving yourself such great hardship. The other said to him, Nothing special. Abba Pimin said to him, I shall not let you go till you tell me. Then he said, I have discovered one simple thing, that if I say to my sleep, Go, it goes, and if I say to it, Come, it comes. A brother asked Abba Sarmatas, 
My thoughts say to me, Do not work, but eat, drink, and sleep. The old man said to him, When you are hungry, eat. When you are thirsty, drink. When you are drowsy, sleep. Fortunately, another old man came to see the brother, and the brother told him what Abba Sarmatas had said. Then the old man said to him, This is what the old man said to you. When you are very hungry, and when you are thirsty to the point of not being able to stand it any more, then eat and drink. And when you have watched for a very long time and are drowsy, sleep. This is what the old man was saying to you. The same brother asked Abba Sarmatas again, My thoughts say to me, Come out and go and see the brethren. The old man said, Do not listen to them about this, but say, I listened to you before, but I do not want to listen to you this time. Abba Sarmatas also said, If a man does not flee from everything possible, he makes sin inevitable. Serapion One day Abba Serapion passed through an Egyptian village, and there he saw a courtesan who stayed in her own cell. The old man said to her, Expect me this evening, for I should like to come and spend the night with you. She replied, Very well, Abba. She got ready and made the bed. When evening came, the old man came to see her and entered her cell and said to her, Have you got the bed ready? She said, Yes, Abba. Then he closed the door and said to her, Wait a bit, for we have a rule of prayer, and I must fulfill that first. So the old man began his prayers. He took the Psalter, and at each psalm he said a prayer for the courtesan, begging God that she might be converted and saved. And God heard him. The woman stood trembling and praying beside the old man. When he had completed the whole Psalter, the woman fell to the ground. Then the old man, beginning the epistle, read a great deal from the apostle and completed his prayers. The woman was filled with compunction and understood that he had not come to her to commit sin, but to save her soul. And she fell at his feet, saying, Abba, do me this kindness, and take me where I can please God. So the old man took her to a monastery of virgins, and entrusted her to the Amma, and said, Take this sister, and do not put any yoke or commandment on her as on the other sisters. But if she wants something, give it her, and allow her to walk as she wishes. After some days, the courtesan said, I am a sinner. I wish to eat every second day. A little later, she said, I have committed many sins, and I wish to eat every fourth day. A few days later, she besought the Amma, saying, Since I have grieved God greatly by my sins, do me kindness of putting me in a cell and shutting it completely, and give me a little bread and some work through the window. The Amma did so, and the woman pleased God all the rest of her life. A brother said to Abba Serapion, Give me a word. The old man said to him, What shall I say to you? You have taken the living of the widows and orphans and put it on your shelves. For he saw them full of books. Abba Serapion said, When the soldiers of the emperor are standing at attention, they cannot look to the right or left. It is the same for the man who stands before God and looks towards him in fear at all times. He cannot then fear anything from the enemy. A brother went to find Abba Serapion. According to his custom, the old man invited him to say a prayer. But the other, calling himself a sinner and unworthy of the monastic habit, did not obey. Next, Abba Serapion wanted to wash his feet, but using the same words again, the visitor prevented him. Then Abba Serapion made him eat, and he began to eat with him. Then he admonished him, saying, My son, 
if you want to make progress, stay in your cell and pay attention to yourself and your manual work. Going out is not so profitable for you as remaining at home. When he heard these words, the visitor was offended, and his expression changed so much that the old man could not but notice it. So he said to him, Up to now you have called yourself a sinner and accused yourself of being unworthy to live. But when I admonished you lovingly, you were extremely put out. If you want to be humble, learn to bear generously what others unfairly inflict upon you, and do not harbor empty words in your heart. Hearing this, the brother asked the old man's forgiveness, and went away greatly edified. Serinus They said of Abba Serinus that he used to work hard and always ate two small loaves. Abba Job, his companion and himself a great ascetic, went to see him and said, I am careful about what I do in the cell, but when I come out I do as the brothers do. Abba Serinus said to him, There is no great virtue in keeping to your regime in your cell, but there is if you keep it when you come out of your cell. Abba Sarinu said, I have spent my time in harvesting, sowing and weaving, and in all these employments, if the hand of God had not sustained me, I should not have been fed. Spiridon It was said of Spiridon that he took care of his flock of sheep with such great holiness that he was judged worthy to be a shepherd of men too. He was called to the episcopate of one of the cities of Cyprus, named Trimithantes, although he was charged with the episcopate, because of his great humility he pastured his sheep too. Now in the middle of the night some robbers came to the sheepfold secretly, and tried to steal the sheep. But God, who saves the shepherd, saved the sheep also. Through an invisible power, the robbers found themselves bound to the sheepfold. Now at daybreak, the shepherd comes to his sheep, and when he came and found the robbers with their hands behind their backs, he understood what had happened. He said a prayer and released the robbers, then reprimanded them, and admonished them at length to give themselves henceforth to hardship and righteous suffering and no longer to live unrighteously. Then he freed them and gave them a ram, adding with a good grace, so that you do not have the appearance of having watched in vain. It was also said of him that he had a young daughter who shared his father's devotion and whose name was Irini. One of their acquaintances entrusted her with an ornament of great price, For greater safety she hid the treasure in the earth, but shortly after she departed this life. After a time, he who had made the deposit came. Not finding the girl, he applied to her father, Abba Speridon, at first demanding, then imploring. The old man grieved for the loss suffered by him who had made the deposit. So he went to his daughter's tomb and begged God to show him before the time The resurrection promised her. He was not disappointed of his hope, for immediately his daughter appeared alive to her father and named the place where the treasure lay, and immediately she disappeared. So taking up the deposit, the old man returned it to its owner. Sayus It was said that Abba Sayus and Abba Mua lived together. Abba Sayus was very obedient but he was very rigid. To test him, the old man said to him, Go and steal. Through obedience, Abba Sayos went to steal from the brethren, giving thanks to the Lord in everything. Abba Mua took the things and returned them secretly. Now once when they were on the road, Abba Sayos was overcome with weakness, and the old man left him there exhausted and went to say to the brethren, Go and carry Sayos because he is lying there helpless. So they went and brought him in. Sarah 
It was related of Amasara that for thirteen years she waged warfare against the demon of fornication. She never prayed that the warfare should cease, but she said, O God, give me the strength. Once the spirit of fornication attacked her more insistently, reminding her of the vanities of the world, but she gave herself up to the fear of God and to asceticism, and went up onto her little terrace to pray. Then the spirit of fornication appeared corporally to her and said, Sarah, you have overcome me. But she said, It is not I who have overcome you, but my master Christ. It was said concerning her that for sixty years she lived beside a river and never lifted her eyes to look at it. Another time two old men, great anchorites, came to the district of Pelusia to visit her. When they arrived, one said to the other, Let us humiliate this old woman. So they said to her, Be careful not to become conceited thinking to yourself, Look how anchorites are coming to see me, a mere woman. But Amasara said to them, According to nature I am a woman, but not according to my thoughts. Amasara said, If I prayed God that all men should approve of my conduct, I should find myself a penitent at the door of each one, but I should rather pray that my heart may be pure towards all. She also said, I put out my foot to ascend the ladder, and I place death before my eyes before going up to it. She also said, It is good to give alms for men's sake, even if it is only done to please men. Through it one can begin to seek to please God. Some monks of Skites came one day to visit Amasara. She offered them a small basket of fruit. They left the good fruit and ate the bad. So she said to them, you are true monks of Skites. She also said to the brothers, It is I who am a man, you who are women. <laughs>